Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Patrice Dolby, Atmos Mixing Engineer at Le Manoir in France and uh, today I will try to answer a very important question that has been asked after the previous video and I got that question from Mrs or Mr G, hello, and G tells me I have one confusion though. As I understand it, Dolby sets the minimum system for consuming Atmos at 5.1.2, uh, which is true, but for producing Atmos they set the minimum requirement at 7.1.4, the main reason being front-rear separation in the height speaker in order to translate onto larger consumer systems, say a home theatre. Uh, your speaker system is 7.1.4, which is also true, but you called it a 7.1.4. 1.2 uh, possibly misspoken no it wasn't but then you set the output with 10 channels rather than the 12 channels needed for 7.1.4 am I missing something and um, well yes but and that's why this question is so important and I really thank you for asking it uh, because I got confused too at the beginning probably because I was prejudiced as I did quite lots of things in surround in 5.1 in multi-channel and uh, when I kind of got the gist of it with Atmos then I took it for granted and I never addressed that question here and your question is really a wake-up call and I'm really thankful for that so I have the opportunity to try to make things less confused. As you know the the beauty with Dolby Atmos is that it's supposed to create a 3D space in which you will place what they call objects, which basically are mono audio elements. And you can place them in this 3D environment using coordinates. X for the left-right uh, movement, Y for the front-back movement, and Z, uh, which is uh, from not down, not bottom up, because it, it, there's no bottom, but it's, I would say, from ears height, if you're standing or sitting, upwards. So that's the elevation, the ceiling speakers. X, Y, Z, and you can see on this small video uh, I, I, I made, uh, that you can see what happens with the speakers, uh, the output of the Dolby Atmos render when an object is moved in each of those directions. And on top of these coordinates you can also define the size of your object and if you set it as a small object we can say but that's really a way of speaking rather than the actual thing but we can say that the objects will be small enough to fit inside a single speaker so say for instance uh, you pan something with um, full front right speaker with no elevation so like exactly like you would do in stereo right and then as you set the size to a bigger object it will start to kind of spill to the other outputs, as you can see on this small uh, footage here. But, and that's where things are, are confusing, this 3D environment is just an, a virtual one, imaginary thing, and then you have to make it real, and for that you have to use speakers. And when I, I mentioned the beauty of the Atmos format and the reason why it may, this time, it may succeed, we are not there yet, but let's see if the, the, the public and so uh, music production professionals will adopt it. Uh, but the beauty of that is that once you've mixed in this 3D environment, you can reproduce it uh, in any speaker configuration because it's the playback device which will 
use all this information, the audio information, of course, which is contained inside your master, your Atmos master file. There's the audio, individual audio tracks, as well as coordinates and size information. So the playback device, which knows how many speakers it has to feed, will use all this information to rearrange it for your speakers. So if it's stereo, fine, that will be left, right. If you're using headphones, it will render into a binaural mix. And then if you have a smart speaker or a soundbar, it will use it at, at best as it can. And if you have a discrete system with uh, individual speakers that you have chosen and managed yourself, then it will adapt to it. Now, so now I think you can see why uh, Dolby would say that if a, in a discrete speaker's environment, 5.1.2 is the minimum the system needs in order to recreate this 3D space with sufficient accuracy. That's good for listening. That's the minimum for listening. 7.1.4 is the minimum for mixing. That's where they consider that you have sufficient accuracy in the positioning of the elements uh, for mixing. But the ideal for mixing would be 9.1.6, actually, but 7.1.4 is all right. And then it can go up to, I believe, but I'm not sure of that, it's 32 speakers altogether uh, in a, what they call the home entertainment system. And for larger movie theaters, it's, I think, up to 64 channels and speakers. Uh, so that's, that's the confusion here that the, the Dolby Atmos virtual 3D environment is not directly linked to the number of speakers. Now, if we come to the second part of the question, why is the master a 10 channel one in 7.1.2? And this is because beside the objects, the Dolby system also uses what is known as beds, which are multi-channel part of the audio. And the norm for Dolby, for those uh, beds, what they call beds, are 10 channel, 7.1.2, which is why my, I'm using only one bed, because in music, I, I'm, I'm not sure it's very useful, but I can use it for like effect returns, for instance. But as you can see on this uh, short footage here, even though the bed, the Atmos bed, and that's the Dolby standard is 7.1.2, the renderer knows that my system is 7.1.4. That's my actual physical system. So as you can see, it is using all 12 speakers. It's already doing its thing. And I think that's a precious secret from Dolby. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what explains the fact that I'm actually sending 7.1.2, which is the Dolby standard for beds uh, and not objects but it's translating it in 7.1.4 because this is the system that I have. But if I was in a recording mixing studio uh, with a 9.1.6 system, it would translate it and adapt it to 9.1.6 and so on and so forth. Uh, so I hope this is uh, now less confusing. And while I'm here, I will also answer very briefly other questions. The first one regarding the fact that Dolby requires the speakers to play flat down to 40 hertz. This is not something I found in the documentation. That's what people at Dolby told me. Uh, the only reference to 40 hertz I found in the official Dolby documentation actually is aimed at movie theaters and that's the norm for speakers in movie theaters. Uh, and I think that's why the people at Dolby asked me uh, this, but um, they will require it uh, anyway. They, they, con they will consider it as the norm. Uh, but they told me also that they are not so picky for the ceiling speakers because that would make little sense to send low frequency content in there. Uh, anyway, that's your last question the, about the Kali in eight speakers. I don't know them. I've never heard them. 
uh, there's just one thing that I've seen uh, is that they say they go as low as 35 or 39 hertz but this is plus or minus 10 dBs uh, and it's 45 hertz plus or minus 3 dB that's always the same thing with speakers the good speakers are the ones you know well uh, so all this really depends upon your particular situation so the, you're the one who knows if it's good or not well um, that's it for today thanks again for this question G and thank you to everyone for watching this far if you have not subscribed please consider doing it and clicking the bell if you want to be notified when I put up other videos and uh, well see you soon bye for now